Hi, thank you for having me today. I really appreciate this, and I appreciate you for being here. Thank you, Liz, for having me in your classroom. The two things that I want to talk about today deal with personification, which is basically giving human attributes to inanimate objects or abstractions or things that are ab abstract in persona, which is basically the narrator's voice, where the voice of the narrator comes from. So first I'm going to do a couple of poems from Black Achilles, which is the chapbook that I had published this year from Accents Publishing. The first poem is called Overseer. And inconvenience plays a big part because inconvenience is what's being personified here. But the narrator is this made up aspect of uh, someone and the persona of that narrator is what we're going to see in the second poem but I want you to understand that this is the narrator throughout and that's the persona of Black Achilles basically and the first poem is called Overseer so, so make sure you pay attention to inconvenience Overseer Inconvenience puts his arms around me. This hug weighs whirlwinds and begs like infidelity's lipstick marks. He wants me to learn how to fall again. There's no sophistication to hitting the ground. I do it harder now, not like sad demigods. Now I aim for couches, beds, and the carpet instead of linoleum floors. I and pissant marvelous, distracting a biting splint in my leg. I never knew walking my obstacle, and all those in wheelchairs with canes with no limbs make me feel the sacrilege against collagen, the separating of myself, me against me, my taut tendon breaking itself in two. Inconvenience puffs out his chest, proud and making me flounder to the ground. I heard inconvenience put hands on Lucifer to spark fires. He bends me over for reclamation, to do it all again, to let me know what tender means. And in that piece you see uh, the narrator who is persona of Black Achilles addressing inconvenience and how inconvenience makes him feel and what happens is that inconvenience is such a big thing in in Black Achilles life that it becomes prominent it becomes almost human because of all the things he can't do after severing his Achilles and being uh, crippled so to speak or disabled, so to speak, he uh, he now has to do things he's never had to do before, and all that takes a backseat. So inconvenience, as inconvenient as it may be for him to do those things, or not to be able to do and function like he used to function, inconvenience now um, becomes prominent, and so much so that it takes on a human attribute as if it is a person. So that's why inconvenience is there. And that was the first poem, Overseer. Uh, this is the title poem, Black Achilles. And so you get to, to address the persona of Black Achilles in this poem. And so you can, you'll see the difference between, uh, you can see the difference between personification and persona. Black Achilles. This God has fallen. My damn fingers go against me, work to keep me balanced on new appendages. Crutches guide me now. It is good if I don't misinterpret my new swagger, how I once feared nothing, heartache, gunshots, tsunamis. I now fear stairs. I have counted them out, 13, down and up, all the superstitions. I have left myself to gain more of myself. 
finding myself in another mindset, a carnival game. And like all carnival games, the house was against me. I could not win, have learned the creaky banister of friendly, like some adventurer that holds me up as I hear my neighbors' voices behind closed doors. I don't want them to see me like this, flailing, obnoxious. I don't want their hands of assistance. I want my tendon healed. Zeus cannot see this, so turns his head. Elohim cannot see this, so smiles at me. Kali cannot see this, so empowerments limp. The coyote would not regurgitate the sun or howl at me. I beseech them all. Anything to get back to me. There's no compromise. I must do the work. So I transform into something strange. Something like Doc Octopus with impediments. Ready to avenge all my shortcomings. So in this poem, in Black Achilles, you get to see and hear the voice of the narrator, who is Black Achilles, and how he is this semi-god or demigod-like person. And because of his Achilles being torn, he is inconvenienced in his life, in his actions, and what he does. So we get to see the persona of him, and, and persona is really a really cool thing to play with. I, I've used persona a lot of times. I actually got this from your teacher Liz when in her book, uh, Hit the Ground, and where she uses pain as a persona. And, well, she uses pain as both persona as well as um, um, persona for being personified. So you see bo both of those things in, in her chat book as well. But I've used the persona of myself as well in my first book, Tough Boy Sonatas. Uh, Leroy, who is a persona of me, becomes the voice through, throughout the book. And what happens for me when I use persona is that I get to veil myself behind the persona of whoever it is. And then I, I have I, I worry less about me coming out. And since I'm veiled, even when I personify my, when I uh, make the persona of myself with Leroy and Tough Boy Sonatas, it just opened up so much more for me that I didn't have to worry about me. And that's the confessional I that I think a lot of times you see sometimes in, in works where there is no line between the two. But in, persona, in being a persona of me, it really comes back easily, more easily for me to do. So I didn't have to worry about memory. I didn't have to worry about recall as far as the things that I used in the book because I gave them all to Leroy. And Leroy carried all that weight. I do the same thing in my book, uh, Dreamus, a mixed genre novel. I give all my work to to um, Malik and Malik becomes uh, the persona that I use to tell the story and so persona helps you at least it helps me get things out and even though I'm saying it from a different perspective or in someone else's voice so to speak or in someone else's uh, body maybe I, I or embodiment should I say uh, or essence I think what happens then is that I take a, a lot of me out of that and I can address the human condition from that viewpoint. And the human condition overlaps everything so I don't have to worry about what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. So that's why I like using persona. And personification is just fun to play with. When you can make inconvenience a real person, what can I say? That's that's cool. I also do that with frustration in this book as well. So you get to, if you are reading this, you will get to see frustration and inconvenience uh, personified to the aspect of a, a human. 
uh, or, or having human attributes. So um, thank you for uh, the time, and I hope you enjoy this. Thanks, Liz. See you all later. Bye.